What is your opinion of this proposal by the governor and whether it would or would not achieve this claimed goal of covering these life or death cases for the transplant patients? The worst part about the story is it does not solve the problem. It does not pay for the transplants. And so, you know, I appreciate my, my colleague, Representative Tovar, saying that, you know, this might help, but it wouldn't really help enough. I actually talked to the budget, the budget chief of the governor today, and this plan does nothing for these transplant patients. And here's the reason. Because what they're going to do is they're going to kick 280,000 people off of access, off of our state's Medicaid program. These are lots of people that are going to still be out there seeking medical services, and they're not going to be able to pay their doctors. And so what's going to happen is that we're going to create this $150 million pool, which, by the way, we can only do with approval from the federal government, which I don't believe they're going to give us, and approval from our state's voters. And then doctors who maybe give transplants are going to go seek to get compensated out of this fund, which they will only get compensated to the tune of pennies on the dollar. So what will happen is doctors just aren't going to do these transplants. They're still going to say back to the patients, you've got to pay for it, and if yeah. you can't pay for it, we're not going to perform the procedure. As I understood it, you were gaining some momentum, and there were even some Republicans in the in the uh, legislature who were appalled at the fact that, for want of a million four hundred thousand dollars, that ninety-eight lives were imminently at risk in your state because of the cancellation of this access coverage for these transplant people. What happened to that? What what chance do you have legislatively of of overturning the governor's decision without going into this Rube Goldberg solution that isn't even a solution? I, I would love to say we'd have a, we'd have a great chance, but uh, I don't know that that's true. And unfortunately, it's again because of the governor. I've actually introduced a bill, Senate Bill 1001, and Representative Tovar has introduced a companion bill in the House to try and restore the transplant coverage. I've gone and talked to the appropriations chairman, who is the chair of the committee this bill is assigned to, and asked, can we get a hearing for this bill? Can we do it urgently? Because there are still 96 people counting on us to restore this funding. And my response from that person was that the governor has told him, uh, Representative, or Senator Biggs, the chair of that committee, the governor has told him not to hear the bill. Mm. So the governor does not want this transplant funding restored. And no matter what kind of solutions we can come up with, she is basically so against it that she's actually telling the legislature not to hear the bill. I mean, your state, uh, like most, obviously has budget issues, and, and we don't have to get into the weeds of the particular budget issues. But the governor's still making choices about where there is money to spend. It's not like the pockets are absolutely empty. And she's still pushing for tax cuts for corporations as opposed to a million four to potentially save 96 lives. Yeah, here's the saddest part about this story, Keith. The saddest part is this is a very small amount of money relative to our overall state budget. And, and it's actually $1.2 million, and, and then we get a $3 million match from the federal government, which we've now lost because we've cut that money. If we restore that $1.2 million and, and get the $3 million match, we could potentially save these 96 people's lives. There are so many different options out there of things that we could do, and the governor is unwilling to consider any of those things, regardless of the point that this could actually potentially save lives. Last point. Did she propose this solution um, and attach it to the issue of the transplants to cover the fact that she just had a good opportunity here to cut another you know, uh, quarter million people's uh, estate Medicaid uh, in, in, to some significant degree? Uh, Keith, uh, sadly, I think this was the plan all along. Mm. All along, the, the governor has been holding on to this transplant issue so that when the state seeks the waiver for, for Medicaid, we could say, well, you've got to give us this waiver because if you don't, then we are not going to be able to restore this transplant money. The sad part is, if, if that was the trade-off, you would think that she would be directly restoring this money as a process of asking for this waiver, and she's not. She's creating this uncompensated care fund, which doesn't even solve the problem. So she's using uh, literally 96 people's lives as a political bargaining chip, and all I ask, and, and the Senate Democrats are asking, is for the governor and the leadership at the Capitol to set partisanship aside, set politics aside, Take, take into account the real human capital that we're talking about here, and, and let's, let's just stop playing politics and, and deal with this issue. Yeah, apparently you had 12 days of that in Arizona, and that was this year's allocation, unfortunately, of, uh, of putting politics aside and people first. Arizona State true. Senator David Shapiro, thanks for your time tonight, Senator. Thank you, sir.